What's up guys? Today we're going to be using Linus. No, not that Linus. Linus, L-Y-N-I-S, not Linus Sebastian, to find vulnerabilities in a system and to help harden a system. So this can be used for Cyber Patriot to help harden Debian and Ubuntu distros. Or you can use this on your main rig if you're running Linux as your main OS to help harden it, make sure that it is more secure than originally given to you. Or if you have access to a Linux system and you're trying to do some privilege escalation or uh, do some sort of penetration test on it, you can use Linus to show you vulnerabilities in that system that you can exploit. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, you're going to want obviously a Linux distribution. I have two and we're gonna be looking at the differences between them and what uh, Linus picks up. So let's start with Ubuntu because that's what most people are gonna be using. Uh, nah, that's fine. And also Ubuntu is a major part of Cyber Patriot, which is going on right now, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure how they're handling COVID or stuff like that, but hopefully you guys get Sorry Patriot because it was really fun when I did it. So we're just gonna log in here. So to install Linus, I typed in sudo apt-get install Linus, and that's how it's spelled. Uh, this will work for any Debian-based Linux distribution, so Ubuntu, Kali, Debian, uh, we're going to give it our pseudo password and if I can type it should work. So it's already installed on this installation. Um, I actually had an issue where it had an older version of Linus so I went to the Linus website, grabbed the newest um, version and installed it and we're all good. At the time of recording I think we're at 3.0.0-100 so that's what we'll be using to test out these two systems. So let's have a look at the help page. So sudo linus and dash h. So you have two, we have three major commands. We have audit, show, and update. When you want to actually run Linus, you're gonna use audit. And then when you want to show the update details or what version you're on, you're gonna use update and show will help show commands, the Linus version, and help. So we're going to be doing audit, so sudo Linus audit, and then we need an option. So we're going to do system. So if you look at audit, you can have audit system, audit system remote, or audit docker file. So if you have a docker file and you wanna make sure that it is up to date and hardened, you can do that docker file. And then if you have a remote system, uh, say you're doing it for an enterprise and you wanted to do it on all of the devices on your network, you can do it from one device and just send it out everywhere. So we're gonna do sudo linus audit and we're gonna do system. Uh, let's make sure my cursor's on there, system. Now, Linus is actually running a lot faster than I remember it to be. This could be because of my hardware and I'm used to running it on school computers uh, for Sorry Patriot, but I don't know. It's running a lot faster than it usually does. It used to take a very long time and a good chunk of our Sorry Patriot time to actually run it and then go through and make sure that everything is good on there. So it's just going through a bunch of different categories seeing what the preferred thing is, and we get a hardening index. Our hardening index for Ubuntu is 65. Now before we go through any of the details or anything, let's hop over onto our Kali Linux, and let's do the same thing. So we're gonna open up VMware again, and we're going to run the Kali Linux virtual machine. I'm just going to run this alongside it without closing Ubuntu. Hopefully my computer doesn't have a heart attack. LTTSore.com. I'm really getting into that Linus Sebastian persona here. Uh, let's maximize and unmaximize so that it, we can see this a little better. Open up a window and sudo 
Linus audit system. So surprisingly, Linux has a lower hardening index than Ubuntu. Uh, this is surprising and unsurprising. Ubuntu is used by more users and it is used as a more of a full fat operating system and is used for everyday kind of things. Kai Linux is supposed to be used as a penetration testing platform and not necessarily as an operating system all the time. So because it's supposed to be used less, I guess it has a lower hardening index and less people use it. But I think that Kai Linux should have a higher hardening index than mainstream operating systems just because it is a security focused penetration testing platform. But that is just my opinion. So obviously we're gonna try and get it to have a higher hardening index. So let's look at some of the solutions that Linus has given us and let's see if we can figure anything out. Security repository, vulnerable packages, two responsive name servers, IP tables, no rules. That's an easy one. Install apt-listbugs to display a list of critical bugs prior to each apt installation. So let's open up a new terminal. Let's put it on the right side here so we don't lose our Linus. And we're going to sudo apt get install apt dash list bugs. Give it our password here. Click yes and let's keep reading. Uh, install need restart alternatively to Debian goodies so that you can run need restart after upgrades to determine which daemons are using old versions of libraries and need restarting. Okay, so this just tells you, hey, your computer needs to restart after an update because these daemons are still running in an older version and it needs to restart. This is good in a server environment um, when uptime is very important and downtime can lose a lot of money. So we're going to run this here and that'll help us to make sure we're running the newest stuff. Install deb scan to generate lists of vulnerabilities which affect this installation. That's also a good thing. That's actually kind of what we're hinting at here in this video. So we're gonna install that. I'm actually not gonna hit enter here. I'm gonna paste it and we're just gonna add more stuff. Deb sums. This installs a verification system for packages and files against known MD5 sums. That's always good. Fail to ban to automatically ban hosts that commit multiple authentication errors. Um, that can be good and bad if you forget your password and you need to log into the system and ban it bans you after like five attempts, that kind of sucks, but it is good if someone's trying to brute force your system to ban them, make sure they can't even try anymore. Set a password on Grub Bootloader to prevent altering boot configuration. No thanks. Consider hardening, hardening system services. Run this command. That's a little bit in depth. We're just gonna try and install stuff first. Install a PAM module for password strength testing like PAM Cracklib. That's always good. I actually would do that for every Cyber Patriot. Okay, so it's not. Uh, I actually don't remember what it's called. And I found my old notes, and it is libpam cracklib. So libpam cracklib. Uh, this helps you with your PAM files. It does some stuff automatically and gives you some a little bit extra leeway to work with. So we're going to install that. Uh, minimum password age, maximum password age. We can do all of that. Let's do the password ages. So this is going to be this is going to hint at a little bit my uh, securing Ubuntu 
video that I made a long time ago for, for sorry, Patriot. I'll link that up here so you guys can watch that. I'll also link my Windows one because sorry, Patriot, and I'll put that up there as well. So let's go look at the minimum password age and maximum password age. All right, so here's our login.defs file, and this is the file that you need to open up in order to change the maximum password age, minimum password age, and the warn age. Uh, if you're inside Patriot, you know what this is. Uh, to get there, you go to Etsy and then login.defs. I can actually close this now and close these. And we can see we opened up with sudo. So I did sudo nano login.defs and password max days. Let's change that. I don't know why I'm trying to mouse over it. Max days, I think it's 90. And then minimum days, I think it's something like 30. Let's actually look up maximum password age 30 to 90 days, minimum password length eight cars, minimum password age five days. So let's do minimum age, let's do that. Let's do 10 and then maximum password age 90. So let's control S to save that and then control X to exit and we can close down that one. So we did the minimum age and maximum age, stable drivers, check DNS, install debsums, update your system. That's always a good idea. Let's run an update here. So sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. We're gonna let that run. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So obviously, depending on your configuration and what you need, depends on what kind of situation you're in, what kind of network you're on, if this is for a workplace or if it's for home use or if it's for penetration testing, will determine which one of these you're going to enable or disable or install. Uh, I am doing the easy ones and I am doing the ones that make sense in a home computer system. Um, obviously you can go through this list and do every single thing on it. It'll make your computer a little bit harder to navigate and use just because of all of the steps and security implementations that you have implemented. So there is definitely a balance between security and usability. If you're on Windows and you took that security slider and you put it all the way to the right, you'll notice that every time you try to do anything, it'll say, are you sure you wanna do this? It gives you the little login prompt and you have to click yes, or you have to enter in your password. And it just, you know how difficult that is to deal with sometimes. So obviously you need to find a middle ground for yourself. How secure are you okay with being versus how much you want to be able to use your computer efficiently and effectively. So just find that middle ground, find where it's secure enough for your standards and it's still usable. Um, we're also going to install a malware scanner. So we're gonna do, I know of RK Hunter, we can also install Clam AV or something like that, but we still have to wait for this update to finish. All right, now that we have installed all the updates, let's install a malware scanner. So I'm gonna start with RK Hunter. So sudo apt get install RK Hunter. And I'm also gonna install clam AV. Never mind, we're just gonna install RK Hunter because I don't remember what the actual name or the package for clam AV is. I'm now remembering that it is just clam AV. Let's try that again. Clam AV. Thank you. This little page that we're getting here is from the restart manager that we installed and it is slightly annoying. So keep that in mind. So now that we have installed a bunch of packages, installed a malware scanner, did a little bit of password management, 
let's rerun Linus and see if we can beat a 60. I think we can. I think we can even beat our Ubuntu. So we're going to rerun this and see how we did. All right, so with our malware scanner, we get a green V right here, and it brings us up to a hardening index of 70. So obviously, if you did all of the uh, asterisks up here, you would probably get a 100. They might actually give you a 99 because you are never 100% secure unless you are offline. But as I said earlier, security comes with compromise, and a lot of people can't be bothered to compromise a little bit of usability for more security. And at the moment, on my personal rig, I don't think so either. So we're gonna stick with that. If you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, let me know if you want more like this, and I'll see you guys all later. <laughs>